Good afternoon and welcome to Coldwater, Ohio for the championship game in the Strikeout Cancer Classic. Coldwater takes on a Fort Recovery. Coldwater won earlier in the day against a Marion local and Fort Recovery won an exciting game against St. Mary's that came down to the bottom of the seventh as they came away with the victory. Fort Recovery is the away team. They're gonna start at the plate and leading off for the Indians is number nine, Emma Will. Will a 255 a batter playing center field today. Fouls off the first one. She's down 0 in one. Pitching for Coldwater, Ava Dahl, number 12. As second pitch hits the dirt, goes uh, behind Will to even the count at one and one. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Dave Bowen. And Dave, we've already seen some exciting um, softball already today. Coldwater, they won in a 10 nothing game. Uh, Fort Recovery had to do a little bit of work, but came away with an exciting victory of their own. They certainly did, Nate. Great to be your wingman here for the championship game of the Strikeout Cancer Classic. You're right, Fort Recovery, they were ahead 10 to one against St. Mary's, gave up that lead as St. Mary's tied it 10 to 10. And then in the top of the seventh with two outs and nobody on, Fort Recovery goes on a run and scores three runs in the top of the inning and then holds St. Mary's scoreless in the bottom to win 13 to 10 and advance to this championship game. You see Emma Will draw the walk there as Ava Dahl having a little bit of trouble with her control here early going. So Audra Bupp coming to the plate. She's playing right field today, batting 233. The left-handed batter steps in, waits on the first pitch. She's going to lay down the bunt. Coming in and just in time to get the out at first, but good heads up running by Emma Will as she advances to third on the throw, but the sacrifice bunt does the trick. Emma Will now on third base. Outstanding execution by Fort Recovery right there. Great bunt by Bupp, and she almost beat it out, but the sacrifice does come into play, and Emma Will, as you said, takes advantage as Coldwater did not have third base covered, and she makes it all the way around the bases to third on the sacrifice bunt. So with one out, runner on third, our batter is Sophie Pearson, a first team max selection from last year. So a veteran in the batter's box for the Indians. Pearson able to get that one, but it is right at Vosco as she catches it, tags third for the double up, and just like that, the inning comes to a close. So after one half inning of play, we are still tied. Coldwater coming to the plate. We'll be back. Coldwater coming to the plate. Their starting nine will look like this. Batting first, number five, Adri Kanapke. Batting second, Madison Wendell playing shortstop this game. She pitched a, a great game earlier today. Claire Steinke, she's going to be catching, and she's batting third. Jordan Hemmelgarn at first base, batting fourth. Kendra Clooney. She's going to play center field and bat fifth. Rachel Schroyer, left field, batting sixth. At third base, you saw her make the great play there to end the top of the first. Kennedy Voskel, she's batting seventh. Dana Zahn at second base and batting eighth. And batting ninth, the pitcher, Ava Dahl. Fort Recovery is going to line up their defense like this in center field. is going to be Emma Will, right field, Audra Bupp on first base, so Sophie Pearson. Behind the plate catching, Maddie Guggenbiller. Yeah, at second base is going to be Ava Greasy. Pitching today, Brittany Tebby. Shortstop is Callie Wendell. Third base is Kayla Heitkamp. And in the left field is Ava Shane. So a bang, bang play there to end the top of the first as Fort Recovery had a scoring threat with Emma Will on third base. But the line drive by Pearson Really, Emma Will was caught in no man's land. Not much she could do. You want to get off with a pitch, but that, that was a shot down to third, and no way that she was going to keep from getting doubled off there. Nice execution by Coldwater. Again, they won their first game today over, um, they defeated Marion Local 10 to zero in five innings. This game in the regular season, Coldwater came away with a victory back on April 18th, a 13-3 victory for the Lady Cavs over Fort Recovery. 
So Avery Kanapke, the sophomore, steps in. She hit a towering home run in the first game over the right field fence, swings through the first pitch, she's down 0-1. Nice speed there by the pitcher, Brittany Tabby. Pitch is on its way, fouled back. Runs the count to no balls, two strikes. Tabby, a junior in the circle for Fort Recovery. Fort Recovery comes into today's game with a 7-11 and 11 overall record. Coldwater 16-6. And strike three as Ava Kanapke, or Avery Kanapke, excuse me, sees three pitches, three strikes, and she's back into the dugout. And here comes Madison Wendell, the junior for Coldwater, just an outstanding player, MAC Player of the Year last year. And again, she's batting 508, increased that average. The last game hits a high one. Just got under that one. She didn't miss that one by much, but it ends up being an easy fly out to center field. Two down, and coming to the plate will be Claire Steinke. Yeah, as you said, she just missed that one. As a freshman, she had 10 home runs, 11 as a sophomore. Almost went yard there. Missed it by just a tick. Nice pitch there by Tebby to retire Wendell. Steinke steps in. She's able to shoot this one the other way. Just gets past the first baseman. Now Coldwater's going to have their first base runner and their first hit as Claire Steinke stands on first. Yeah, I really like Claire Steinke's approach in the batter's box. She's a spray hitter. Fires that one to the right side. But the thing about, you could say spray hitter, maybe you think that has a negative connotation. She's hit the ball hard all day long today. And there was another example of that right there. Tebby's first pitch goes in for a strike. Jo Jordan Hamelgarn, the first baseman, stands in. Finds herself down 0-1. Tebby a little high on this one. Catcher can't grab it in, so we're going to see Steinke move up. She's now standing on second base. Coldwater with an opportunity here to maybe get a run in on a hit. Yeah, two outs in the inning, but a runner in scoring position. See if Tebby can work herself out of it. Hamilgarn a little late on her swing. Finds herself now in a hole. One ball, two strikes. Yeah, real two. good pitch by Brittany Tebby right there. Tebby looks in. She fires. This one's going to be on the ground a second. Gathered up, tossed over to first, and a quick first inning for both sides as we are going to be scoreless as we move into the second. When we return, Fort Recovery is going to take their second trip to the plate. You're watching girls softball on WOSA. Welcome back. Today's scoreboard is sponsored by Wabash Mutual Telephone, a proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. Fort Recovery is going to be making their second trip to the plate. Looked like they had something going there after the first couple of batters in the first inning, but a nice double up by Kennedy Voskul got, um, got Coldwater out of the scoring threat. And Fort Recovery is going to go to back to work here in the second. Going to go back to work against Ava Dahl, the freshman pitcher. This is her third appearance of the season. The workhorse for Coldwater is none other than Madison Wendell. She's at shortstop in this game. Um, Dahl sports a 7.64 ERA. And talking about Wendell being the workhorse, she is committed as a junior to go to Marshall University, going to be part of the Thundering Herd softball program. But this is a great opportunity for Ava Dahl as Wendell pitched the first game, a 10-0 shutout over, uh, as we said, Marion Local. And then so pop nice out effort. Yep. Just out of the reach of Avery Kanapke. And then Wendell last night, she pitched a 4-0 shutout against Elida. So again, good experience for Dahl here as she faces Maddie Guggenbiller, the leading hitter for Fort Recovery in the four spot. She bats 346. 
So we actually had a last minute change to the roster as it is not a Guggenbiller in. It is going to be number 15, Olivia Kanapke, as she is at the plate right now. That's correct. Down one, two, ball two goes in. Top fly, end up being called off as Madison Wendell able to track that one down. So the first out of the inning as Olivia Kanapke pops out to the infield and Kylie Poe steps to the plate. I apologize for that in, uh, that situation with the roster, but what we had had Guggenbiller in it, but Olivia Kanapke in the cleanup spot for Fort Recovery in this game. Kanapke is a freshman. Kanapke only has one appearance so far this year, drawing the start here in this championship game. And now we have Kylie Poston in the batter's box, a sophomore. Right there at second on the team with a 342 batting average. Kylie finds herself ahead in the count, 2-0. One down here in the second. Ball's going to be high. And Kylie Post now, now up 2-0. As there goes strike one, 3-1 count on post. Post at the plate, waits for the pitch. This one's going to be high. She's going to draw the walk. Good patience shown by Kylie Post. She's on base. And that is going to bring up Ava Greasy, second baseman. She ended the last inning uh, fielding the ground ball by Jordan Hemmelgarn. And we have another change as is going to be number 10 for well, Fort Recovery. I hope, I hope these numbers are correct. Again, Fort Recovery is wearing their cancer, their pink cancer t-shirts. And it just might be a situation where the numbers may not match up. And a deep drive out to left field, but a great job able to track that one down. Great catch by Rachel Schroyer, Schroyer out in left field. Looked like that ball might make the fence, but it does not. It's the second out of the inning. She post had to retreat back to first as she was almost all the way to second. She thought that that ball was going to get over the left fielder's head as well. So two outs, runner on first, and the pitcher, Brittany Zebby, stepping to the plate. See if she can help herself a little bit here. Pitch was a ball, runs the count, two balls, no strikes. As Ava Dahl has had a little bit of a hard time here in these first couple of innings finding her control, but has made pitches when she's need to. Yeah, that's a great way of putting it, Nate, because she, she struggled going deep into counts, but overall she's faced almost the minimum as this is just a seventh batter and as we're in the top of the second with two outs. This one's hit, it's going to be Bloop just over the shortstop's head and into shallow center field. So they don't always have to be hit hard, they just got to be hit where they're not. Yeah, they all look like line drives in the scorebook. Two runners on now with two outs. Madison Wendell gave a great effort for that one, dove for it, unable to come up with it though. So Kenzie, uh, Kenzie Gerke into the game, another switch as we've had some last minute changes to the lineup. You know, as we mentioned, Fort Recovery has already played one game today, so the lineup card getting shifted a little bit as they needed to get some players in. So number 13, Kenzie Gerke into the game. She's going to pop this one up 
as the right fielder, Avery Kanapke, able to come over, snag that one. And no harm as Coldwater is able to keep Fort Recovery off the scoreboard yet again. After one and a half, we're still tied at zero. We'll be back with Coldwater coming to the plate. Welcome back as Coldwater is coming to the plate. Number 21, Kendra Clooney will be leading off for the Lady Cavaliers. Yeah, we definitely have some lineup changes from what we were given. We're sorry about that. We'll do our best to get everything matched up as quickly as possible. Clooney sees ball one. The senior bats 306. Takes ownership of center field defensively. Second pitch a little high. Count runs at 2-0. Oh. Brittany Tebby out on the mound. Ready's her next pitch. And a swing and a miss as Clooney was trying to send that one over a fence with that swing it looked like. And just swing, swing, swung, excuse me, just underneath it. So again, these two teams, rivals in the MAC overall. Coldwater's picked up five MAC championships in their history of softball. Fort Recovery, too. And strike two at the knees. That's a good pitch right there. You get that strike, you want to live down there all day long, Nate, because it's hard for a batter to do much with that low strike right at the knees. So after being down 2-0, Tebby has fought back to even the count at 2-2. Pitch is in, swing and a miss, strike three. As Kendra Clooney's heading back to the dugout. And Rachel Schroyer saw her make a nice play in left field, top of the inning. She's going to come to the plate now and try to see if she can't get herself on base. 237 hitter, the junior. Tebby right now is dealing. Yeah, she's coming right at him. Again, you get that low strike, you get a little more confident out there, feel like the strike zone maybe has expanded a little bit. Come right at the hitters. A little high on that one, even the count at one and one. Our officiating crew behind the plate, Steve Trout, and on the base is Larry Lloyd, veteran softball umpires. Hitch on its way, another swing and a miss. As Tebby has induced quite a few, or uh, quite a lot of those swing and misses here in the early going. Yep, yep, veteran umpire and crew. Between games though, they did treat us, Nate. And there's some big goods being sold and they sent a set up to us as Schroyer goes down on strikes. Third strikeout of the game for Tebby. That's gonna bring Kennedy Vosco to the, to the plate. Kennedy playing third base this afternoon. Overcast day, a little bit of a light breeze, but still feels really good out here for an early May day. Sure does, 72 degrees, light winds. Beautiful day for a doubleheader. It's been a great crowd showing up here today as well for all four schools, four teams. As the consolation game is occurring between St. Mary's and Marion Local, Right behind right field. 1-1 one, one count, two outs here. Bottom of the second. Still tied at zero. That's efficient use of fencing too, Nate. We got our right field fence is the left field fence for the other diamond. One fence works both ways. This pitch is going to be up. Bring the count. Two balls, one strike. Beautiful press box here at Coldwater High School. Enclosed dugouts, additions to the field this year. Swing and a miss. Kennedy Vosco not able to catch up. She finds herself now at an even count, two and two. Trying to keep the inning alive for the Cavaliers. Tebby with a chance to retire the side via the strikeout. That one's going to be just a little bit low. You can tell Tebby thought that she had gotten the strike on that one, but it's going to bring the count to full. Tebby takes a breath, looks at the wrist. She's ready to go. 
Pitch is on its way. It's going to be popped up. And it is going to drop into short right field. So a nice job by Kennedy Vosco to work the count. Got it to full. And then didn't try to do too much with the pitch. Just found some open green and got on base. Yeah, nice piece of hitting right over Ava Greasy's head. She gave great hustle for it, but again, found the grass. Two out single. That brings Dana Zahn to the plate, the freshman. That's 226. Plays second base defensively. Pitch a little bit low. Zahn lets that one go by for ball one. For recovery, dug out, moving the defense around, getting everybody in the right position. Pitch on its way, swing and a miss. As Tebby still doing a nice job firing those in there, going right after the hitters, inducing quite a few swings and misses. Yeah, good rhythm, good rhythm in the circle. Another swing and a miss as Zahn now finds herself down, one ball, two strikes. Yeah, pitching with a lot of confidence is Brittany Tebby right now. Tebby trying to get out of the inning, the straining a runner on first. This one's going to be hit. Looks like it's going foul, and it does. Down the third baseline. Zahn going to have to come back and do it again. And speaking of the renovations, down both lines, we, we're not completely closed in. We have the chalk from the fence to the fence, if you will, to the outfield fence. And the fans have to stay behind that, but a beautiful view without the fence. But again, softball fields and baseball fields usually enclosed all the way around. This one's going to be high and outside. Runs the count to two and two. And I'm sure that the AD here at Coldwater, Eric Goodwin, has that in the game plan. Just unable to get to it this season. Wouldn't be surprised if we're all locked in come next year. This one's going to be fouled back out of play. Zahn doing a great job staying alive, working the count, making sure she's at least fouling pitches off to keep her, keep her up at the plate. You're right, Nate. Having an excellent at-bat is one Dana Zahn. And a swing and a miss. Tabby comes back to get her third strikeout of the inning and to keep Coldwater off the scoreboard. After two innings of play, we are tied at zero. We'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Today's scoreboard sponsor is Wabash Mutual Telephone, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. Today's game is also brought to you by Charles River. Top of the third, Fort Recovery up to the plate as Kayla Heitkamp steps in the third baseman, watches the first pitch come in, and that is ball one. Yeah, Kayla's a sophomore, and after two complete, we got ourselves a good old good one, Nate. Zero to zero. Both teams battling. Pitchers really getting after it. There's a nice ball. This one's going to be popped up. Going to have to try to get to it. No one's going to get there. It's going to fall in for a base hit for Heitkamp. So the leadoff single for Fort Recovery gives them an opportunity here in the top of the third to put some pressure on Coldwater defensively. So number 16, Lana Charlman. And she's going to step up to the plate. Number 16, Lana Schlarman. Schlarman, the freshman, stands in. Wade Zavid Dahl's first pitch. This one's going to be high. You know, Coach Shane playing a lot of different players, as you mentioned. Full dugout of. Fort Recovery Indians and a time when a lot of programs are struggling with numbers on the softball side. That's not the case with the Indians. And I think right now. This one's hit, Charlton goes the other way. That one's gonna drop down for a base hit. Gonna try to stretch it down to three and the hesitation's gonna cost her. As Heitkamp got to second, thought about it for too long before she took off for third and she gets gunned down by Avery Kanapke. Yeah, Coach Shane was calling for her to keep running, but she stopped at second, looked to find the ball, and then tried to make it to third, but the arm of Avery Kanapke to Kennedy Voskel had her dead to rights. 
So one out in the inning and the runner still on first, an opportunity right there squashed with great defense by the Cavaliers. So now it's Hannah Irvin coming to the plate, number eight. As Irvin also a freshman, sees the first pitch come in, gets ahead of the count, one ball, no strikes. So again, to finish that thought, you know, Coach Shane playing a lot of players, trying to find out what we've got, looking at tomorrow a little bit for the program. Again, they're seven and 11 overall. They did not pick up a win in the MAC, 0 and 7. So I like her thinking in the sense, hey, let's get a lot of at-bats. Let's create enthusiasm in our program instead of just having girls, especially the young ladies, sit on the bench. Let's support each other and get an opportunity and get you an at-bat and see what happens. Irvin down in the count, one ball, two strikes. Able to connect on this one off the pitcher, but right to Madison as she is able to turn the double play. Madison Wendell with a tremendous defensive play. Yeah, in your scorebook, that's going to be one to six to three for the third out because that went off of Dahl's glove, and then Wendell did the rest, touched the bag and throws the first to retire the side. So that is going to end this half of the inning as now Coldwater, after the great defensive play, is going to have an opportunity at the plate. Ava Dahl, the pitcher, comes to the plate as she is batting in the ninth position. Brittany Tebby has had a very efficient go through the first, uh, first round through the lineup here. Uh, she gets another swing and a miss. Ava Dahl down, no balls, one strike. You know, Nate, it's interesting. Uh, softball and baseball, the nuances of the game. For recovery in the top of the third inning, they had two hits in that inning. But yet, Dahl, who's at the plate here, faced the minimum in the circle. Two hits, but they were able to get a runner trying to advance on the base hit to the right field, who was thrown out, and then a double play off of the other hit. Just, just very impressive, and again, you watch this game long enough, you think you've seen it all. And in reality, there's always something unique that presents itself. Well, that goes back to, you know, it, not every pitcher is going to go out there and be able to throw, you know, you know, fastballs by everybody. They're not going to, you know, have a, a lot of mystery stuff. As you see, Dahl put this one down to second. That one is tossed over to first for the first out of the inning. Nice. But sometimes it's just a matter of doing with what you have and be able to work with it. And for Ava Dahl, her, pow her stuff isn't overpowering. She's not going to blow the ball by a lot of hitters. But it's putting it in a place where the hitters are going to have to swing, going to have to put it in play, and then trusting that your defense is going to get it done. And that's exactly what we've seen out of the first two innings from the Coldwater defense. You're exactly right, Nate. You, you just gave me a flashback. Let's see what happens with this pitch to Kanapke. Yeah, flashback. Back in 1984 when this tall right-hander was on the mound, I would turn around and tell my defense, be ready, the ball's going to be hit to you. <laughs> that is not a strikeout pitcher by any stretch of the imagination. I needed my defense. And that's what we're seeing for both squads here in this game thus far. Great defense being played. Avery Kanapke heading to count. Two balls, no strikes. One out here in the bottom of the third. Kanapke just a little late on that swing. Sends that one out of play. Kanapke's got a little lift in her swing, and as, as we talked about earlier in the first game, she hit a towering home run over the right field fence. Kanapke lets this one go as it bounces in the dirt. And she's ahead to count three balls, one strike. Sometimes that little lift in your swing can also create a hole in it, but when you connect, you usually hit it pretty hard. As Tebby loses Kanapke, she's going to trot down to first base. She gets the free pass. Now Madison Wendell, she's going to come to the plate, looking to see if she can't find some way to get Kanapke around. You're right. That's the last thing Coach Shane wanted to see would be a free pass before the two, three, and four hitters for Coldwater, Wendell, Steinke, and Hemmelgarn. There's a drive. She hits this one a ton as it gets hung up in the trees out in left center field. And just right on cue, Madison Wendell with the two-run home run. That yellow sphere is out of here. It hits the tree, 
out behind left center field. And again, Madison Wendell, the recruit for Marshall University, has been very impressive today, both in the circle in game one and at the plate in both contests. Bats over 500. Very, very impressive right there. That was a no-doubter from the moment that it hit the bat. She went to the deep part of the park and gave herself plenty of room even when she did that. So now Claire Steinke comes to bat. Claire's also had quite a, bit, a few hard hit balls throughout today, game one and even in her first at bat here in game two. Steinke watches strike one. That's a nice comeback pitch to the next batter there by Tebby. And you got to give credit to the sport recovery squad. That's not going to phase them. They were ahead 10 to 1 in game one. And St. Mary's clawed themselves all the way back to tie it. Oh, inside, outside on their swing that time. Just in the foul territory. As Steinke has such a quick bat, even when she gets jammed, she's able to get the. Uh, get the fat part of the bat on the ball to get good power. Just couldn't keep that one inside the lines. Yeah, Hit, hits it hard. Like we said, previous at bat, just sprays it everywhere. But again, Fort Recovery, St. Mary's came all the way back, but Fort Recovery, they bent, but they didn't break and held St. Mary's to those 10 runs, scoring three themselves in the top of the seventh and then finished things out to find themselves now in the championship game. Down a couple of runs off of Wendell's home run, but they'll keep battling. Steinke barreled one, another one up. This one to the right fielder. Kept this one in fair territory, and she's standing on first base with the base hit. Yeah, she's two for two going to right field with both singles thus far in this game. I really like her swing, Nate. Just nice and level through the zone, as you said. Hits the fat part of the bat right on the Squares right, squares right up on the ball, finds herself on first base with another single. So now it's the first baseman, Jordan Hamilgarn. She comes to the plate. She grounded out to second base to Ava Greasy in her first at bat. Right side of the infield and outfield has been busy for Fort Recovery. The defense has been up to the task, though, as Brittany Tebby, outside of the big swing by Madison Wendell, she has stood tall here for the first couple of innings. Yeah, neither team with an air thus far. Tebby's pitch is high. As the count goes to one ball, two strikes. Claire Steinke out on first, one out here in the third. The championship game of the Strikeout Cancer Classic. Debbie's pitch. And this is going to be lifted. Center fielder's got a run, able to get to it. And we think that's Emma Will out there, number nine. And it is. It is, yes. So nice catch. Will had to cover a lot of ground to take care of that one. Two outs in the inning. Now it's Kendra Clooney. Clooney was a strikeout victim her first time up back in the second inning. She has another opportunity here in the third. Two outs, Kendra Clooney swings and misses on the first pitch to make the count 0-1. We've got this mini tournament here with the championship game of the Strikeout Cl Cancer Classic, but both these teams know where they're heading in the OHSA tournament. And Coldwater's a three seed. They'll play the winner of Allen East and Bluffton at Coldwater on Friday, May 12th. That'll be a sectional final game. Fort Recovery, they're the seventh seed. They will play Paulding. Paulding was here for the first game. Don't know if they've stuck around to scout this one, but they'll play opening round sectional style action on Tuesday at Fort Recovery. Debbie's pitch was in the dirt, gets away from the catcher. So Claire Steinke is going to move up to second base and is in scoring position now. Looney down in the count, one ball, two strikes, but has a runner out there for her to try to get the RBI. Debbie's pitch is going to be fouled back one more time as Clooney a little bit of that lift in, your, in her swing that you were talking about, Dave, which is just getting a piece of it to stay alive. Yep, the 306 hitter, Kendra Clooney. 
has a runner in scoring position here. It'd be a big run with two outs. And Clooney swings through the pitch. She is going to be a strikeout victim again. But a big swing by Madison Wendell gives Coldwater the lead here in the third. They're on top, two to nothing. And we'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back to today's scoreboard sponsors, Wabash Mutual Telephone, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. For recovery at the plate as Sophie Pearson steps in, the 341 batter is trying to get the inning started off right, see if she can't find a way on base. Ava Dahl still on the mound for Coldwater. Down in the count now, two balls, no strikes. It's always a big half inning for you when you come up to the plate when the other team has scored against you in the previous half inning, which Coldwater did, obviously, with the Wendell two-run homer. Any way to get on for Pearson, and there's a drive up the middle. As Pearson drops that one right in front of the center fielder to lead off the inning with a single. Yeah, Kendra Clooney came after it real hard, but she shaded the left field on the... Third base side of second base, and that ball was straight up the middle. She couldn't get to it. So Fort Recovery does have their leadoff runner on, their leadoff batter on with a solid single up the middle. And now we do have Maddie Guggenbiller at the plate. So Guggenbiller steps in as this one bounces in front of the plate, gets past the catcher. Pearson's going to move on to second. As we mentioned, Ava Dahl has struggled a little bit here in uh, these early innings with her uh, control, but has made the pitches when she needs to. And right now she's in a position where she needs to bear down and try to get some outs. Sophie Pearson out at second. 2-0 count on Guggenbiller. Guggenbiller way out in front of that pitch. Brings the count, two balls, one strike. Pulled the string on that, the changeup. Guggenbiller way ahead of it. Nice pitch by Ava Dahl. Guggenbiller with a hard hit past the second baseman into right field. Ball goes all the way into home. What a great relay as Sophie Pearson is going to be gunned down at the plate. A bang-bang play that almost probably benefit, or, uh, hurt for recovery uh, how hard that ball was hit. Yeah, great piece of hitting right there by Guggenbiller. She kept her weight back, waited for the ball to approach, and then drove through it, and it did. It got out to Avery Kanapke really, really quickly, and she threw the ball all the way from right field on a line to her catcher. Claire Steinke, who put the tag on Pearson. No run scores. Coldwater shuts the door at home plate to get the first out of the inning. Right there in your scorebook, it's nine to two. So Guga Miller moved up to second on the throw. Kylie Post is up the 342 hitter. Gonna see if she can't try to drive in Guga Miller. Post pitch falls in for a strike. Two balls, one strike. As Ava Post has it, or Ava Dahl, excuse me, has not had to be dominant. Just had to let her defense play, and they've done a tremendous job here through the first three innings. They certainly have. Again, that, that was just an outstanding uh, play by Kanapke out in right field. Left-handed right fielder. She came up throwing, and it was on a line all the way to Steinke at home plate. Put a star beside that one. This one's going to be high for ball four as Kylie Post will make her way down to first. So first and second. Got always got to take a minute now to make sure that our scorebook is up as Ava Greasy as she comes to the plate with two on and one out. Greasy pops this one up in front of the plate. Great job. As Claire Steinke comes out, makes that catch. That's in fair territory as well, so that was a fair ball. 
Nice catch. Again, it could have been a situation where the umpiring crew might have called infield fly rule, but that's a difficult call to make when the catcher's involved in that kind of situation. But it does create another out in the inning, two outs now. So Lily Sweeterman comes to the plate to pinch hit. And she is hitting for Brittany Tebby. Again, a different philosophy for Coach Shane to bring in the pinch hitters early in the game, but I like it. I like what she's doing. Uh, the girls have been aggressive at the plate all the way around, whether they've been in the field or if they have come in to pinch hit. Big, big at bat, though, for Schwederman with two outs and two on here to try and get a run across, put a dent in that scoring column and cut the lead at least in half against these Cavaliers. Ball high, gonna run the count to three and zero. Oh. Ava Dahl is Ava Dahl looking to try to see if she can't get out of trouble here. Ava Dahl took something off of that one. Just wanted to make sure she got the strike over the plate. As Sweeterman fouls this one off. Again, I'd like to talk to the stick to of this Fort Recovery squad. Again, they had a big lead. St. Mary's cut into it. Last night, they got beat 10 to 1. And uh, again, they just keep battling. Just keep battling. That's what you want to see from your team, especially this time of year as tournament opens up, tournament play opens up next week. Sweeterman just got a piece of that last pitch to stay alive. Bases two strikes. This one's going to be high. Ball three, runs the count full. Going to try to take off. And a great heads up play by Guggenbiller that time. Caught the defense napping, was able to move to third base. And then right behind her, her teammate, Kylie Post, followed suit. And that was almost like a called play by Coach Shane. I was watching Guggenbiller at second base, and she did. Once that catcher started throwing it back to the, her pitcher, Dawes, Steinke was throwing it to Dawes. She took off immediately, and she comes into third safely. And now again, a big scoring threat for Fort Recovery. Sweeterman watches ball four sail high and outside, so the bases are loaded. Fort Recovery down two is... Coach Arns is going to come out and talk to Ava Dahl. I really like this decision by Coach Arns to talk to Ava as well as his complete infield. You've got a freshman in the circle here. And again, it's only her third appearance of, appearance of the season. So let's settle down the troops a little bit and just get this out. Let's get the batter. We can touch any bag. We've got two outs in the inning. So make the safe play. So Ava Dahl trying to get herself out of trouble. As number one, Callie Wendell steps to the plate, trying to see if she can't plate a few runs. And she's the shortstop. She was pinch hit for in the second inning. So this is her first at bat. Wendell fouls this one back. A little greedy right there. I think she feels like, well, Ava's not a super fast pitcher, and that ball's coming in there real big, but that was a little high. Like I know Coach Shane would like to see her attack the ball in the strike zone. Ava Dahl hit out to dead center field, just out of the reach. Two of runs the are center gonna fielder. score. Clooney trying to get it in, ends up getting it to the plate to stop the. Oh, uh, stop the runner from third from advancing, but two runs across the plate, and it is a 2-2 tie. Great piece of hitting by Callie Wendell right there. The two RBI double over Clooney's head. Plates two were all knotted up. Great game thus far, having a lot of fun right now as, again, both teams competing with intensity. So here's Kayla Heitkamp. The third baseman steps in. Still two runners out on the bags for her as Fort Recovery tries to take a lead. Lily Schwederman at third and Callie Wendell at second. Avidal's pitch comes in. It's called a ball. 
As Heidkamp now is ahead in the count, two balls, no strikes. Two outs here in the top of the fourth. Four recovery just tied it up. As Ava Dahl is trying to get the third out. Heidkamp singled her last at bat, hits it hard again. This one's high in the air to center field. This time, Clooney's able to gather this one in and bring the inning to a close. So after three and a half, we are all tied up. Fort Recovery able to plate two runs. Coldwater coming to bat to try to answer. Coldwater coming up to bat as Rachel Schroyer comes to the plate to lead off the bottom of the fourth. Brittany Tebby still out on the mound for Fort Recovery. They were able to tie it up at the top of the inning. Schroyer fouls off the first pitch to fall behind 0-1. Nice aggressive swing. Schroyer struck out her first at bat, looking to get back at Teb Tebby here a little bit. Tebby's second pitch goes right by Schroer as she swings right underneath that one. Finds herself down in an 0-2 hole. Yeah, I've been impressed again with Brittany Tebby all day long, working ahead in the count, bringing the heater. She's long, she's got a nice delivery to home plate. Tebby tried to get that riser yeah. by Schroer again. This time she was able to hold off of it. Counts one and two. Pitch is on its way. This one's going to be popped up high into the air. Center fielder Emma Will camping underneath it. Able to squeeze that one to get the first out of the inning. That is going to bring number nine, Kennedy Voskel, to the plate, the third baseman. Singled her first time up today. Yep, nice base hit to right field, the senior. Vosco watches the first pitch go by, it's a ball. Yeah, Vosco, she was an outfielder last year for Coldwater, playing third base this year. She's done a real nice job down at the hot corner today. This one's gonna be popped back, and it is out of play. Bounces off the press box. Yeah, Eric Goodwin had his hands out there, try and catch that one. I'm going to give him the air as the ball ended up hitting the press box, his brand new press box. You think a, the AD had sacrificed a little bit more to keep that <laughs> ball from digging the siding. 1-1 one, one count, one out here in the fourth. We are all tied at two. Brittany Tebby on the mound, delivers the Vosco. Vosco. Watches that one go by as it's low. Runs the count to two and one. Beautiful afternoon here in Coldwater, Ohio for the Strikeout Cancer Classic. Tabby able to field her position as Voskel had some backspin on that one. And that is going to be two outs. So Tebby right now Doing a nice job moving through this cold water lineup. She is, and she has an opportunity to have a clean inning for the first time today with two outs, nobody on. Dana Zahn, your second baseman at the plate, the freshman, batting 226 at this point in the season. That one is out of play. Zahn had a nice at bat last time up, long extended at bat, but ended in a strikeout. Round ball to third, can't handle it. As Zahn is going to get to first base mm. as that hit right yes. off of Heitkamp's glove on the hot shot. And a good heads up play backing her up was her shortstop. Well, there was an air there at third base, but I'm going to tell you right now, I think that base runner, I think Zahn caught a break. She rounded in to the field as she went past the first base bag. Fort Recovery tagged her, but the officiating crew said no. Surprise the Fort Recovery coaching staff doesn't question that. We, we don't have replay, but we do, but we don't. Uh, in high school softball, we have replay with WOS then, but can't use that in the game itself. So I think maybe Coldwater caught a little bit of a break there. Let's see if they can do something with it with two outs. So Ava Dahl comes to the plate now, two outs, runner on. 
And that is our first air of the game for either team. It's been a really, really clean game defensively. Ava finds herself down quickly, 0-2. Tebby trying to get out of the inning without any damage. Pitch on its way, took one off of that one. Dahl has to duck underneath it. One ball, two strikes, two outs here in the bottom of the fourth. Dana's on down at first. Pitch on its way and swing and a miss as Brittany Tebby gets out of trouble and brings the fourth inning to a close. After four full, we are back to being tied at two. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Today's scoreboard sponsor is Wabash Mutual Telephone, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. Our game is also brought to you by Charles River. We appreciate all our sponsors and everybody that helps us bring the best local sports to uh, the area. Top of five for recovery coming to the plate. Last time up, they were able to get quite a few base runners, push two across the plate to tie this one up as We've seen Ava Dahl struggle with her control a little bit here this afternoon. Great opportunity for Fort Recovery here in the top of the fifth inning. Third time through the lineup. Emma Will, the honorable mention Mac player from last year, so she has veteran experience at this point in time, even, on, even though she's only a sophomore. She's got a lot of games under her belt be a big, big plus if the Indians and Will can get on first base at least here in this at bat. As Will pops this one up, fortunate for her, no one able to get to it. Gonna run the count to two balls, one strike. Found the no man's land between home and third base as it falls helplessly. New life, if you will, a little bit. For Emma Will. So Will steps to the plate towards the front of that batter's box, gets a hold of this one, gets to short. That's and a nice a great play. great play by Madison Wendell out at short as she had to backhand that ball, had a long throw over to first, but had enough on it to get the out. Real nice stretch by Jordan Hemmelgarn as well, but Madison Wendell goes to her right and throws a strong, strong throw to first base. And that's a big out when the leadoff uh, hitter's taken out of the equation with what looks like it's going to be a single. So the left-hander, Audra Bupp, steps to the plate. Swings through the first pitch. She falls behind, no balls, one strike. Championship game of the Strikeout Cancer Classic. Up, not able to connect on the second pitch. Finds herself down 0-2. Coach Shane giving some words of encouragement. Had to hesitate a little bit that one as Bub had her timing off, but able to get a piece of that one to foul it off and stay alive. Tough situation right there as a batter. Thinking, I don't think it's a strike, but I know I can hit it. And should I swing? But I don't think it's a strike. And she fouled it off, like you said. Same thing on that pitch. Really had a reach for that one. Able to foul it off the end of the bat. Continue to give herself an opportunity here. Plate protection right now on exhibit by Audra Bupp. Up, able to connect on that one, but it's right to Wendell. She fires it across for the easy out. So two up, two down, both grounded out to Wendell at shortstop. Now here's Sophie Pearson coming to the plate with two down in the top of the fifth. Yeah, the 341 hitter, first team max selection last year. The senior. This one's going to be popped up. Second baseman's going to call it off. And at a 1 2 3 inning, as Dana Zane was, or Zahn, excuse me, was able to finish off Fort Recovery. And Coldwater is going to come to bat to see if they can't get the lead. Back to Coldwater, Ohio. Avery Kanapke stepping to the plate. It's Avery scored one of the two runs for Coldwater here this afternoon. 
We know she has power as well, but drew a walk. This one, though, is going to be popped way in the air. Shortstop able to camp underneath it as Callie Wendell squeezes it for the first out. That's a big out as we're in the top of the, or excuse me, the bottom of the fifth inning, and it's the top of the lineup for the Lady Cavs. Kanapke pops out to shortstop. Last at bat, she walked, and then our batter now, Wendell stepped in and hit one into the trees for a two-run homer. Two, three, and four. Tebby's got to be real selective and paint the plate, but there's a shot. Madison Wendell, hard grounder to the shortstop, but Callie Wendell able to handle it. Gets it over to first. Two pitches, two outs. One Wendell to another right there. So, could be a very efficient inning for one Brittany Tebby, because I believe she's only thrown two pitches. See if she can pull it off. So now here's Claire Steinke coming to the plate. Claire's been on base twice so far this afternoon, trying to make it three times. First pitch is a ball. As Tebby checks out uh, the dugout, see what pitch she wants to be thrown. Set, fires. This one's going to get hit just under the glove of the second baseman. So Claire Steinke is on base for the third time. Ava Greasy had to go to her right right there. Got the glove down, but the ball eluded the leather, and Steinke reaches safely. I'm going to go with a single on that one, Nate. And Steinke is taking full advantage of the right side of the field today as we've seen her go the opposite direction all three times she's been up. Correct. She's three for three in this game. She was three for three in the first game. She is perfect thus far, six for six. Think that's going to help your batting average? Yeah, I think she's going to look back and say she had a pretty good day. So now it's Jordan Hemmelgarten. First baseman comes to the plate. Finds herself ahead in the count. Two balls, no strikes. Two outs here in the bottom of the fifth. All tied at two in the championship game of the Strikeout Cancer Classic. Roller to the shortstop. Wendell not able to gather it in. Everybody's going to be safe. Wendell came hard to her right. Got there in time. But then the ball again bounces off her leather for an error. And now the Cavs have two on with two outs. And what looked like had the possibility of being a quick, clean inning for Tebby has now evolved into a situation with two outs, a scoring threat for Coldwater and your center fielder, number 21, Kendra Clooney, the senior, stepping into the batter's box. Clooney has struggled a little bit here at the plate in the second game as she has gone down swinging on both of her plate appearances. First pitch is high, ball one. Tebby's had five strikeouts on the day thus far. This would be an opportunity or situation where the Fort Recovery faithful would love to see her do that with Clooney at this at bat. Counts even, one ball, one strike, two down here in the fifth. Tebby delivers. Clooney sends one the other way. They're going to go to the plate. Throw comes in to second as she's going to hold on to the ball, and Coldwater is going to take the 3-2 lead. Again, a nice piece of hitting by Clooney to go hard to the right side. They've been pounding the right side all day long. Give her the RBI, and as you said, Coldwater takes a lead, and they have runners on first and second. Again, very impressive as all of this is being done with two outs in the inning. So Rachel Schroyer is due up at the plate. Might have some changes as Coach Arns talks to the umpire. So we may have a pinch runner. Number 19, Sydney Grishup coming into the game to run for Helmogarn. So Rachel Schroyer at the plate, 237 batter has yet to be on base in this game. Struck out of her first at bat. Flew out to center field her second. Swing and a miss on the first pitch. Good velocity with her swing. Her hands are quick. 
a little bit off balance. She ends up on her toes as she swings through the zone. I'm sure Coach Arns would like to see her stay, stay steady and drive through the ball, use that leg power. That's so going to be popped up to the right. Can anybody get to it? And a long run, great play that time by the right fielder as Aldra Bupp able to come in and squeeze that to prevent Coldwater from getting any more runs. That is going to bring the fifth inning to a close. Coldwater pushes one across to take the lead, 3-2. to two. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Today's scoreboard sponsor is Wabash Mutual Telephone, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. Top of the sixth inning, Fort Recovery comes to the plate. Number 44, Matty Guggenbiller, is going to lead things off for the Indians. You know, we've talked about this game where the defenses for both squads have been really, really solid. Fort Recovery does have two airs. No run has scored off of either air. For, or Coldwater has been clean defensively, and just to talk about how good they've been defensively, Ava Dahl doesn't have a strikeout in this game, so every out has been taken care of by the Coldwater defense, and again, they've been stellar. So Ava Dahl finds herself behind in the count, two balls, no strikes, that's three balls, no strikes to Guggenbiller, and we kind of talked off air, you know, Madison Wendell only had to pitch five innings during that first game because of the run rule. You wonder if at some point here, if Ava Dahl continues to struggle with her control, they think about bringing her in. Struggles with her control a little bit, but again, the, the defense has backed her up a little bit uh, to take care of things when she has had a walk, although Kylie Post scored uh, in the fourth inning after reaching on a walk. But you're right, Nate. You've got, you've got Madison Wendell sitting there in your back pocket if you're Coach Arns. He'll just have to make a decision if and when he wants to go to her. Again, she pitched a complete game Friday night, pitched a complete game here in game one today. But I can remember back in the day where you would have one softball pitcher who pitched every single one of your games. And uh, again, coaching staffs and uh, philosophies have changed to where you got to have some depth there so your number ones are always fresh when you need them when it comes to big time situations, big games. And we may have ourselves a big time situation yet evolve in this game. Well, and you mentioned tournament time coming up as well. And, you know, as you mentioned, managers always like to know that they have a little bit of depth if necessary come tournament time. Three balls, one strike after Matty Guggenbiller was walked on four straight. As Kylie Post now. Base is a 3-1 count. Post pitch comes in. That one's going to fall short of the plate. So Kylie Post marched down to first. Maddie Guggenbiller out to second. And here comes Coach Orange to have a conversation with his pitcher. And you may be a prophet here, Nate, and see if he's going to make a change. If we're just going to have a discussion. Looks like right now just a conversation doesn't seem to... He looking like maybe he's going to take the ball from Ava quite yet. And he's going to give Ava a chance here to work out of trouble. It'll be good experience for the freshman. But two runners on now with nobody out. Coldwater with the one run lead here in the top of the six. So Ava Greasy, she comes to the plate. Second baseman waits on the first pitch. Popped out to the catcher first at bat. I wonder if Coach Shane might put the bun on here right now. No signals down here at third base. Move the runners up with nobody out. Put the pressure on the cold water defense to execute. Nope. Popped up. And that one's going to be a pop up to first. Nice job by Hemmelgaard to move around a little bit of traffic there. She had to get off the bag and get to the ball and able to get the first out of the inning. Home plate umpire Steve Trout called the infield fly rule right there. So infield fly if fair, which it definitely was. And then the runners can advance at their own discretion. Everybody stays home, one out in the inning. Here's Brittany Tebby. The pitcher's had a nice day out on the mound. She's been on base twice so far. 
great opportunity for her to help herself with a solid line drive single. A little bit low on that pitch to run the count to two balls, no strikes. Guggenmiller, who we saw, Guggenbiller, excuse me, who we saw steal third the last time she was on the bases with a big lead out there, second again. This one's on the ground. Nice flip by Wendell to get the lead runner out at third. It's now two down here in the sixth, and you know, we were just talking about maybe Ava Dahl needed to come out, try to see whether or not Madison Wendell needed to come in to try to get the save, but Ava Post right now standing tall, back-to-back -back outs, and one batter away from getting out of trouble. She's done a nice job since Coach Arns went out and talked to her and the rest of the infielders. And that was a nice play again by Wendell going with the easy out to Voskel at third base to take Guggenbiller off the bases. Still a great opportunity with a runner in scoring position at second with Callie Wendell. She had a double her last at bat. Wendell hit a deep shot to straightaway center field that Kendra Clooney wasn't able to track down to plate two runs. This time the pop-up's gonna go out and gonna drop into foul territory just out of the reach of Coldwater. Excellent effort there by Jordan Helmogarn, the first baseman, and Dana Zahn, that second, trying to track that one down, but again, found some green there in foul territory, so continue that bat for Callie Wendell. Again, Dahl, Dahl's going to work, want to work the outer third and inner third here. Don't want to put anything right down the middle because Wendell, we've seen already, she can tag it. Last pitch was a little high. Two balls, one strike. Callie Wendell waits the next pitch. This one's going to be on the ground between third and short. They're going to hold the runner at third. Great job getting the ball in quickly by the left fielder, Rachel Schroer. Coach Shane had the hands up from the get-go. The stop sign was in play, and that was a good decision because, as you said, Schroer got the ball in to Wendell immediately. And now we have full bases, and I think we may have a pinch hitter, number five. Kyla Dews, the freshman, is going to come in with the bases loaded and two outs here in the top of the sixth. Gonna try to see if she can't plate some runs for her team. Great opportunity. Let's see how comfortable she looks in that batter's box, the freshman. As Dahl brings it plateward. Aggressive. Dahl, and Dahl induces the swing. She came over top of that one. And this is a big batter for Dahl as well. We've seen her struggle at times um, with with some of the control and location of her pitches. This is one of those ones as she pumps in another strike and finds herself ahead in the count. No balls, two strikes. So Dews is down, as you said, 0-2. Dolls come right at her. Big pitch right here. And strike three. Ava Dahl comes back after getting the first two on base with nobody out. Battles back after a meeting with Coach Arns and gets out of trouble. Heads, we're heading to the bottom of the six. Cold water's coming up, and they're on top, three to two. Cold water coming to the plate here in the bottom of the six with a run, one run inning. And Kennedy Vosco will be leading things off. Vosco's one for two in this game, a single to right field, and then a line drive back to Tebby, who caught it to retire her, leads things off here in the bottom of the six. It's the Coldwater Lady Cavs. They look to go Geico and find some insurance out there, or Progressive or State Farm, wherever you want to go, Nate. But Coldwater would love nothing more than to play a little add-on and give Dahl a more than a one-run lead going into the seventh inning. Debbie's pitch goes to the plate, going to be a little high. Count goes to one ball, one strike. Voskull just underneath that pitch, but got a little bit of it to foul it back. 
The count moves the one ball, two strikes. Coldwater with a 3-2 lead. We're trying to get the inning going. We're trying to get a couple of extra runs here as we head towards the seventh. Oscar just gets a piece of that one to stay alive. Tebby moving the ball around, nothing right down the middle of the plate. It's really had a nice game in the circle here today. As has Dahl, like you said, some, some control issues, but hasn't hurt her. This one's popped up. Race to it, and it is tracked down by the first baseman, number two, Sophie Pearson. A great defensive play to record the first out here in the sixth. Yeah, put a star beside that one again. Comes in hard, dives for it, reels it in, and whenever you can keep that leadoff hitter off the bases, you provide your pitcher with a great opportunity to come right at the next batter. And again, uh, nice job there by Sophie Pearson. So that's going to bring Dana Zahn to the plate. Dana's one for two here in the game, struck out her first times and reached on an air in the fourth. Now Dana Zahn, the freshman, she played shortstop in the first game with Wendell in the circle and moved over to, has moved over to second for this game. One of the up and comers for Coach Arns in this cold water program. One one count. Zahn waits on the pitch. This pitch gonna miss. Brings the count to two balls, one strike. Zahn steps back into the batter's box. Pitch is on its way. And this one's gonna be a strike to even the count at two and two. Continues to be a beautiful day here in cold water. A light breeze keeping things nice and cool. This one actually bounces off the front foot of Zahn, so she's going to march down to first base on a hit, hit batter. I like her style there in the batter's box. She just took that one right off the foot. Used to be back in the day, you tried to avoid getting hit at any cost. You see a lot of players, both in baseball and softball, wear it, you know. And they do it intentionally, any way to get down to first, and Zahn does that right there. Ava Dahl steps to the plate, 0 for 2 on this afternoon. Grounded out the second or first time up, struck out last time up. Going to see if she can't help her cause here and try to move Zahn up maybe to second or farther. Ava waits for the pitch, turns for the bunt. Not able to get it down into fair territory. Going to move the count to one ball, one strike. Right idea there is you want to try and put that runner in scoring position to play a little bit of add-on as you turn the lineup over and go to the top. But Ava Dahl unable to execute the bunt in this situation, and now the Fort Recovery defense is playing way in. This one's going to get thrown down. And we're going to have out as Zahn, maybe a little miscommunication on those. Not sure if she thought maybe it was fouled or what happened as she kind of got hung up between first and second. Throw goes down to second, and now there's two out in the inning. Nice throw by Maddie Guggenbiller. She put that one on a line to her shortstop. Callie Window put the tag on Zahn. Like you said, Zahn hesitated for a second. I think... I think the straight steal was on as Coach Arns was encouraging Zahn to get to second base, but she hesitated, and that hesitation at the varsity level will cost you, and Fort Recovery executed the, the play to perfection defensively, and there are two outs in the inning now. 2-2 two -two count. Ava puts this one on the ground, a shortstop. Wendell crossed the diamond for out number three. And it turns into a 1-2-3 inning for Fort Recovery as the Indians are going to have a chance to come to the plate here in the top of the seventh to tie it. Coldwater is going to look to try to end this one. When we return, we'll have the seventh on WOSN.
Welcome back. Today's scoreboard sponsor is Wombass Mutual Telephone, a proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. Today's game is also brought to you by Charles River. We appreciate all of our local sponsors helping us bring you the best local coverage of high school sports in the area. Well, we go to the top of the seventh, Nate, and Ava Dahl is still out there in the circle having herself a great game, but she's going to have to go through the meat of the order for Fort Recovery as it's one, two, three, and we'll lead things off with Emma Will. Ava finds herself down, one ball, no strikes, facing Emma Will, trying to protect a one-run lead. A hard hit ball is going to go foul to even the count at one and one. Got to be impressed with Ava Dahl here tonight. She has battled through, not giving in. She's gotten some help from her defense, but she has stood tall in the circle so far today. Couldn't agree with you more, Nate. She has been aggressive in there. Again, not always around the strike zone, but absolutely good enough to put the pressure on the Fort Recovery hitters. And then her defense has just been outstanding for her limiting Fort Recovery to two runs at this point in time. She hasn't struck out a batter today, and that's okay when your defense steps up, and that's been the case thus far. Three balls, one strike. Looked like ball four coming in as Emma Well reached out and up to get her bat on that one to bring the count. Three balls, two strikes. For recovery right now, looking for base runners. Pitch is going to be up and high. Emma Will is going to trot down to first. Release point just not where it needed to be on that last pitch as it sails high, as you said, and Fort Recovery. Here they come. Nobody on or nobody out and a base runner in their leadoff hitter, Emma Will. And Audra Bupp will step to the plate now. She's 0 for 2 thus far in today's contest. Bupp watches this one sail high as Right now, it seems like Ava's having a little bit of difficulty with that release point, as you mentioned. Oh, looks like she might be holding on to it just a little bit long, letting those sail a little too high. Yeah, again, a great growth experience, growth opportunity for Dahl, as it looks like Coach Arns, he's just going to keep Madison Wendell at shortstop in this game. This one's spinning and going to go foul. A great job that time by Kennedy Vosco to recognize the spin on that ball as it was going towards the sideline, not to touch it too early. You know, sometimes players get a little bit excited. They want to grab it and fire it off because they, they're just unsure, but a good heads up play to let that one roll foul. Absolutely, Kennedy Vosco with a great mental play right there. That ball had sideways spins, sideways spin on it. That's tough to let it go because it could die on you, but she did and it goes foul. We all reset. David Dahl comes back with a strong pitch to go up into the count. One ball, two strikes. You see Bupp just able to get a piece of that one off the front of the bat to stay alive. As Ava Dahl seems to have made the adjustment and is back to pumping in strikes. Yeah, Bupp's got to keep her weight back here. Wait for that ball to get to her. This one off the front of the bat, going to go foul as well. So Bupp has played with both foul lines now, once with, via the bunt, and then that one pulled that one down the first baseline. And again, we'll reset. One and two, your count. Nobody out. Fort Recovery with a runner on first, down one run, three to two. Sophie Pearson waits on the on-deck circle. The 341 hitter trying to see if she's going to have an opportunity to knock anybody in. Pitch was a little outside, moves the count even. Two balls, two strikes. No outs here in the top of the seventh. Fort Recovery down one. Ball comes, ball comes in high, and it's a full count yet again. Great plate discipline by Bupp right there. That was a tough one to lay off of. Pitch comes in. Bupp going to send it to second. No chance for the lead runner. That hesitation, though, and look at second is going to cause Zahn an opportunity to get an out. So Fort Recovery now with runners on first and second and nobody out. So, yeah, you got to give the infield single to Bupp there. Now, as you said, Fort Recovery in the chips with nobody out and runners 
on first and second. And your first team MAC player from last year, Sophie Pearson, the senior at the plate. Pearson watches the first pitch come across, ball one. We'll see if the runners get started at any point to try to move them a little bit closer to home. Pearson watches strike one come in. Yeah, that previous play, that was a tough call for Dana Zahn at second base. She's thinking, I need to get the leadoff hitter, but the ball wasn't hit very hard. She charged it, and by the time she thought about second, it was too late to get the runner at first. Hard hit to third, just out of the reach of the third baseman, Kennedy Voskel. Coldwater quickly gets it in as Rachel, Rachel Schroer was able to get to it. But that is going to load the bases with nobody out for Fort Recovery. Sophie Pearson does what you want a first teamer to do. Hits the ball hard. It's a single. It goes off the glove of Voskel. But that ball was hit hard, goes into left field. And now Fort Recovery is really dealing. And again, Coach Arns is going to ride with Daw here in the circle. And uh, Madison Wendell is not going to come in and pitch because I think if you're going to use her, now would be the time. And Maddie Guggenbiller steps in. Bases are loaded. Strike one. And now she's down in the count 0 and 2. It's a little smile come out of Guggenbiller there as I think she felt like she could have done something with that pitch. Not happy that she missed it. 44 on her shirt. Maddie Guggenbiller's got to be a two strike hitter now. This one's also fouled off. Guggenbiller just out in front. She's already moved up towards the front of the plate as well. Hard swinging, trying to put the ball someplace that's going to give her team a lead. Play's going to come to first, and they're going to call her out on the double play. But the run does count, so we are now tied at three. But after the nice double play started by Madison Wendell, they are just one out away from getting out of trouble from just moments ago as the base is loaded and nobody out. Yeah, great play defensively right there. Uh, they were not playing in to cut the run off, so the run does score, ties things up. But Coldwater gets two outs on the play, so they'll see if Dahl can get the batter here and Kylie Post and then get in and get the bats going. But right now, Post has something to say about that in the batter's box. 1-1 one, one count. Sophie Pearson sits out on second base. We are all tied at three in the top of the seventh. This one's going to be popped up. Don's going to be able to get to it, and that is going to bring the top of the seventh to a close. Coldwater gives up a run as Fort Recovery is able to tie it up, but now Coldwater is going to have an opportunity to win this one in the bottom of the seventh. Coldwater comes to the plate in the bottom of the seventh. Game's tied as Avery Kanapke gets things started for the Cavaliers. Yeah, top of the lineup for Coldwater, one, two, and three. Kanapke, Wendell, and Steinke. Again, we talk about the double play being the pitcher's best friend, Ava Dahl. Oh, that's definitely her best friend, a six to five to three. You don't see that every day in the previous half inning. And that really got Coldwater out of the jam. A run scored on the play, but we're still playing and Coldwater has an opportunity to win this game in the bottom of the seventh now. One, one count, Kanapke waits on the pitch. Strike two. And Brittany Tebby. Waits for the pitch to come in, and she's ready. Hard hit right over the shortstop's head. And Avery Kanapke begins this inning with a base hit. Nice piece of hitting as she went with that outside pitch. The left-hander did. Avery Kanapke, that's her first hit of the game. She was 0 for 2 with a walk, but a solid leadoff single to the left center field puts Coldwater in a position right now, but we got a pitching change. And number 22, Jenna Holman, the freshman is gonna come in with the big hitting Madison Wendell due up with one on and Fort Recovery trying to keep this game tied. 
So Holman is going to get her warm-up pitches in. We'll step aside, and we'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Today's scoreboard sponsor is Wallbash Mutual Telephone, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. Jenna Holman is all done warming up as you see Madison Wendell step to the plate. We are tied here in the bottom of the seventh. Avery Kanapke on first base. And Madison Wendell coming up, trying to see if she can extend this inning or maybe possibly even end it. Holman, first pitch swung. And Callie Wendell, a little bit of a bobble as she tried to get that out of her glove. And that was just enough for Avery Kanapke to beat the throw into second. And there are runners on first and second for Claire Steinke, who has absolutely crushed the ball all day long. Dave, you mentioned last time she looked great in the first game. She's looked great here in the second game, and she is wearing out right field. And if she can get another one over there, that might be all it takes for Avery Kanapke to come around and score. Two on, nobody out. Coldwater in the chips as Wendell reaches on the air. Uh, Holman comes in. She's got nice velocity again. Long, nice stride, good torque with her delivery. But she's got a lot of work to do here in the meat of the order for Coldwater. With two on and nobody out. Holman sets, delivers. Swung and a miss by Steinke as Holman just blows that one right by her to bring the count to one ball, one strike. Steinke steps back in up towards the front of the batter's box. Waits on the pitch from Holman. Yeah, good Pitching. velocity, good velocity with her. We can close the book on Brittany Tabby now. She went six plus innings. Faced 28 batters, gave up seven hits, three runs, two earned, two walks, struck out five, and gave up the one home run to Madison Wendell. Hard hit ball to second under the glove, out to the right fielder. They're going to send Kanapke. Can she beat the throw? She does. And that is going to do it as Kanapke was able to slide under the tag. And she is going to give the victory to Coldwater. They're going to win. Four, two, three. So your strikeout cancer classic champions, the Coldwater Cavaliers come away with a hard fought victory here today. And we will be back to wrap it up here on WOSN. Welcome back to Coldwater, Ohio, where the Coldwater Cavaliers are the strikeout cancer champions. Take a look right now at our strikeout classic MVP brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. And we had some discussion. There was a couple of players that we considered, but when it came down to it, Claire Steinke ended up being an easy choice, 7-for-7 seven seven on the day, and the game-winning RBI here in the championship to deliver the win to Coldwater. Yeah, Claire Steinke, what a day. 7-for-7, seven seven, as you said, Nate, five singles, two doubles, three RBIs, and she scored three runs in the two games combined and had the winning RBI here in the bottom of the seventh against Fort Recovery. Madison Wendell had a great day as well, both in the circle and at the plate and at shortstop. But when you're perfect in a doubleheader, uh, that's impressive. And then you add on what else she did for her team to help secure the victory with that game-winning RBI here in game number two. Claire Steinke, an easy call for us for the MVP of the Strikeout Cancer Classic. As you mentioned, a, just a tremendous day for Claire, but there was a lot of contributions throughout the whole lineup. I know you have some numbers to look over this game. It was a competitive one. You know, we saw two different uh, contrasting styles from our pitchers, but a close one all the way throughout. Fort Recovery stayed within striking distance, tied it up, but in the end, it ended up being too much cold water. Yeah, when you have a one-run game like we did today, you've got to have good pitching. It was a four-to-three affair, and again, four uh, 
Fort Recovery, Brittany Tebby, she went six plus innings, faced 28 batters, gave up seven hits, four runs, three earned, walked two, struck out five, and gave up the one home run. She's going to take the L. Jenna Homan came in and in relief, and she faced two batters and gave up one hit. Ava Dahl, she gets the win for Coldwater, the freshman. She went all seven innings, faced 32 batters. Gave up nine hits, three runs, all earned as Coldwater played airless defense behind her. She did have seven walks. You mentioned her control issues throughout the game, but they did not hurt her. Again, a nice win for Ava Dahl, the freshman. Uh, On the scoreboard or or the statistics for both teams uh, offensively, Coldwater again, or excuse me, Fort Recovery, three runs on nine hits. They had three errors, and they left eight runners on base. Coldwater, the four runs on eight hits, they did not commit an error, and they left six runners on base. So, again, Coldwater comes away with the double victory in the championship today, Nate. So, congratulations one more time to the Coldwater Cavaliers as they are your strikeout cancer classic champions and knocking off Marion Local and Fort Recovery to walk away with the title like to thank our WOSN crew for the great job that they did. As always, we appreciate everything that Jacob, Kelsey, Cassidy do for us back in the studio as well, doing all the editing. You guys do the hard stuff. We get to do the fun stuff, and we appreciate it. I'd like to thank the hospitality from the Coldwater Athletic Department as well, treating us right. We got a nice spot up here in the brand-new press box. They gave us some food as well, kept us hydrated throughout the day. We appreciate that hospitality. One final time from Coldwater, Ohio, the Coldwater Cavaliers knock off Fort Recovery to become the Strikeout Cancer Classic champions as they walk away with a 4-3 victory. For Dave Bowen, I've been Nate Garlock. Thank you for tuning in, and have a great day, everybody.